Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the AI Driven Marketer. I'm Dan Sanchez. My friends call me Dan Chez. And today, I want to give you a sneak peek. I gave a broad view of what I was doing with podcasting, but I wanted to show you how I'm automating newsletter creation with AI. Now, a lot of this isn't even AI, it's actually just, you know, straightforward marketing automation stuff. But with a little bit of AI magic sprinkled into what we were doing with marketing automation already, all of a sudden you can actually automate a full-blown newsletter and not have to actually write the content for it. Now, I know a lot of you writers out there are probably getting mad at me. You're like, oh my gosh, you're automating the whole thing? You're like, where's the human element? <sighs> like, <laughs> I get it. Like, uh, there's a craft to writing and a lot of people are really romantic about that craft. I am not. Like, I used to be a graphic designer and I was romantic about the visuals and now I'm like, whatever. Like, I'm, I'm a marketer. I'm practical. If I can get it done without hiring a writer or writing it manually myself, I freaking will. And guess what? As AI tools get better, it's going to happen more and more. So let's let's get on the train and just figure out how to do it ourselves faster before everybody else. Um, and I realize that some AI models are better at writing than others. I'm just using chat GPTs, that's what my tool here integrates with. So let me show you what I'm doing because the principle of how I'm doing it is what's more important than the actual model that I'm using or even if you agree that it's good newsletter content or not, uh, it's going to get better and as the models get better, like it'll fix itself. But think about how to do this, learn how to build it now so that we can be the ones actually doing the work of building these things later, keep us competitive, right, in the marketplace. So. Let's figure out how to do this kind of stuff as marketers. And I'm going to show you behind the scenes of how I'm using this. Now, uh, if you're listening to this, uh, I'm going to be walking through the system. It's going to be explaining it as I go through it uh, to match with the visual. But just know that this is a video podcast. And I, I like to show stuff because there's a lot of show and tell involved with making these things. So if you're an Apple podcast, you can actually open up the video straight in your feeder. Just open up the episode all the way. Uh, or otherwise, you can uh, watch on AIDrivenMarketer.com. You can watch it on YouTube. If you're on Spotify, sorry. They don't let me syndicate video there uh, unless you're doing a Spotify app, and I don't. So uh, <laughs> you'll have to open up the video. But here, I'm going into my app, which is a, a journey builder of a kind. It's my uh, my CRM marketing automation platform of choice called High Level. Uh, you can learn more about my whole toolkit at AIDrivenMarketer.com slash toolkit, and it's listed there. Um, you can learn more about it, but I'm not doing a demo on high level here. I'm just in the automation builder where you could do, you could do this with HubSpot. You could do this with other uh, marketing automation tools. And if you can't now, then you will be able to soon. The thing that is the most interesting to me in these tools, right? Cause you have all these things you could do. Of course you can trigger the journey by a form or a purchase or whatever the heck you do to trigger them. Um, and then in the in these automation builders, you can create these paths. This one's a really simple, straight, linear path. There's no if-then statements to create different logic in this particular build. And you have all these different options in a marketing automation platform that you typically have available, right? To, you know, here I have, I can take in, I can build, shoot information to other platforms with a webhook. I can wait, I can... Uh, send emails, text messages. I can tag contact records. I can move information from one field to another. There's like all these different things in high level I can do. Very cool. But the one that's the most interesting to me these days because AI is this ability to go and query open AI and then capture its response in a different field for a contact or even for the whole account. And that's what I'm doing here as I am using the GPT powered by open AI like element in the journey builder here in high level. And it gives me some options. I have the option to only go to GPT 3.5 turbo if I want it to be faster and cheaper, or if I want it to be more robust chat GPT 4 turbo. Hopefully in the future, they add 4.0 and the 4 mini to save, to be faster and save more time, right? Um, but for now, those are the options it gives me. They have different action types uh, here in high level um, underneath that option. It's like analyze text sentiment, summarize text, translate content. I almost always just do custom. And here you have your prompt. And this is where all the freaking magic happens. Um, they also have this little, before I get into the prompt magic of what you can do with this, it also has this awesome little temperature thing, which is kind of an API. If you're not used to dealing with OpenAI's API, temperature is just kind of a nice tool because you can literally tone it down. I think it's like 0 0.1 to 0 0.9. 
uh, and a point one would be like, it's almost like instructing it to almost give you the most literal and most minimal version of what you're asking for versus 10. If you are sorry, if you give it a point nine, then it's like, be more loose and more creative. I almost always get pretty dang close to like, no, just give me what I want. Cause I need to know it's going to work every time be less creative. <laughs> so that's an example. Let me show you what I actually built in order to build a newsletter. So how do you automate a newsletter? Doesn't that create like horrible newsletter content? That's I'm sure what a lot of people jump to because I'm sure if you just go to chat GPT now and be like, Hey, build me a newsletter for plumbers. It's going to give you a really boring like article on pl like, for plumbing as it does for blog posts. Even if you're more specific, Hey, make me a newsletter for plumbers about how to stop uh, PVC pipes from leaking after when they get from older homes or something. This is more specific and it's going to yield a better article, but it's still going to be lame content because it's not based on anything unique. In this case, I'm actually automating it uh, by w when contents, uh, when the, when the record passes through here, it will have a podcast, a unique podcast episode transcript attached to it that it's going to be pulling from. And the prompt is very dynamic. Let me show you how I'm actually approaching prompts now. So I'm opening up the element of this workflow um, in this, this chat GPT element where I can essentially go and query chat GPT right here for my marketing automation tool. And it has this super long prompt. And let me, let me kind of break down the prompt. First is kind of this beginning prompt. You are an expert copywriter who specializes in making fun and engaging content for insert podcast name. See, I'm actually putting variable content in here because I plan on using this across multiple accounts and client accounts. Uh, and I don't want to have to rewrite it over and over again. So it just inserts the podcast name here. And then it goes on to state, your current position is the editorial director for a podcast name, a media brand focused on helping insert target audience and then insert value proposition, right? Because <laughs> the value proposition is going, always going to be like it helps people with X, you know. Um, so it sets a broad statement giving context to AI in order to know who it is and who it's working with and for, right? And then the instructions, please repurpose the podcast transcript. I actually like when I create newsletter content, um, with AI, I almost always tell it to write a LinkedIn post because for some reason, the f way it formats a LinkedIn post is how I prefer uh, content. I don't actually ever ask it to write a LinkedIn post if I'm actually posting to LinkedIn, but that's a different story. I tell it to write a LinkedIn post, so, and not a newsletter. <laughs> uh, so repurpose the podcast transcript into a LinkedIn post, but do not include emojis because it goes a little heavy there, right? Write in choppy sentences with a variety of sen sentence lengths and a few extreme line breaks to add style. Bold one or two key phrases with an HTML strong tag. Write it as a standalone content piece with references, uh, referencing the original episode. Write in the first person of the podcast of the ho as the host directly to the audience using the pronouns you and I, right? So I'm giving it highly specific instructions and in how to create this content. Um, I then go on and give some more instruction. I actually wanted to output it as HTML and that's important later. I'll show you why it's important for me. It may not be important for you, but I wanted to give it to me in HTML because I'm going to format it in HTML automatically, right? I don't want to have to format it myself. I just want to stick it, jam HTML in the newsletter and have it formatted properly. So it's doing that for me. And then I insert the podcast transcript inserted dynamically here. I have it like like podcast transcript, and then it has a merge tag for the episode transcript coming from the contact. LinkedIn, and then I give an example of what a newsletter looks like fully produced, and it's actually written in HTML, so it knows like, hey, see see how this one's written in HTML? That's what I want. I want you to output it in HTML with the bold tags, with the P tags, with the unordered list tags in order to organize it. And then I even include a newsletter style guide that I'm dynamically inserting here via another merge tag, which is just a long freaking paragraph of how I want my, uh, the newsletter to be formatted. Um, I usually sit down with the client and then discuss like what this style they want, and then I put it into a style guide. I use AI to help write it too. Um, and then I insert that in there so it hits a little bit closer to what they're hoping for as far as the newsletter goes. I'm also starting to do this for my own personal uh, newsletter, but this one I'm looking at in particular is for a client, um, though I'm usually using the same prompt from, um, from account to account right now. So that's cool, and that's working. It then queries ChatGPT. I then move, use, you know, mark, good old-fashioned marketing automation to say, hey, go ahead and take my response that I get back from uh, from ChatGPT and insert it in this custom value because I'm going to take those custom values that it in injects the answer to the from the prompt into the newsletter later. 
Um, I'm even going to use it for other parts of the newsletter. So in this case, I only have two variable parts, or sorry, three variable parts of the newsletter. Um, one, it creates the body of the newsletter, the main thing. I also then take that body, so it writes the body. I then inject it into another prompt that says, please write a single sentence tease that... Uh, so a single sentence to tease the topic of the newsletter reference below. Remember to introduce the guest if there is one. Do not use emojis, right? And then here's the newsletter body that ChatGPT already delivered to me. I'm now delivering it back to it for a second time um, to write me a little intro. And you'll see how that plays out in the newsletter in a bit later. And then, of course, I have some other pieces that I'm I've, that is already in the system. Like, I, I, unfortunately, I wish I could automate the graphic design for the thumbnail for the newsletter but it's just not there yet dolly just isn't good enough mid-journey is but they don't have an api to tap into so getting closer someday dolly will be able to automate that to part two but not yet so i have to up in before this gets kickstarted, i have to upload an image into the system um, and it moves the title around moves some data around and then goes and actually sends it to a different sequence i have here called the newsletter sender um, I won't explain how the automation works, but essentially from each guest that runs through the system, uh, their podcast transcript turns into the newsletter, and then everyone gets this newsletter automatically. It essentially notifies the system, hey, we have new newsletter content, and by the next time they pass through this loop, uh, it triggers saying, hey, we have new content, send the newsletter. So it sends the newsletter to the whole list automatically. I don't have to go in there and format or do anything. You could see here's the newsletter in high level before it's actually injecting the information into it. And there's a couple of different elements here. You could see here's a custom field for the newsletter intro, which ChatGPT wrote. Here's the body we were talking about, that really long prompt that gets injected here. You can't see it, but there's actually this little custom thing where I'm injecting the thumbnail for the image of the newsletter too. And that's coming later on. And then of course there's like the static elements that are pretty much the same every time I have a, hey, watch watch or listen to the full episode of insert episode title on. And then I have links to Apple, Spotify, and YouTube. And I'm always using the same links that just takes them to the top of the page since this email will only ever go out right after an episode is published. So whatever is on the top of Apple, Spotify, and YouTube will be the most recent episode that this newsletter is referencing. Um, and then I have a featured resource to get some leads out of the thing if they want to. And then of course links to social, but all this stuff is the same every time I might make the featured resource dynamic later on. Um, and ultimately you can use AI to come up with multiple pieces of content. It's not like you have to query it per newsletter subscriber too, though. That would be kind of cool to customize it based on the subscriber, but you can actually, I could probably take this one podcast transcript and come up with different types of content. Like have it say, hey, pull a list of the resources. Hey, go and find the top five nuggets uh, and then bullet point it out here. And I would inject that into a different part of the newsletter. You see how even just with one piece of content, the, the transcript, you can actually query AI and then create multiple sections of a newsletter. It's really powerful. I'm personally just starting with this little intro statement and then having the image there and then having the body of the newsletter for starters. But as I perfect this and tweak it, I'm going to start adding more sections just based on the one content, maybe injecting a few more uh, original pieces of content in order to keep it interesting and create a little bit more variety in this newsletter. But if you're looking at it like how I'm looking at it, this completely changes the game. I struggle to send out newsletters, but guess what? I'm not going to be, I'm going to be so consistent in my newsletter now, and I'm never even going to touch it again because every time I publish an episode, I'm going to take that transcript, put it in the system, and then bam, after that episode goes live, this newsletter is going out. It's going to be awesome. So let's take a look at what that finished newsletter looks like. I just ran through like multiple tests to try to get it up to a part where it like looks good. And I'm like, okay, this is good enough that I would send it out now. Um, and so we see a working, this was the most recent one that I ran through based on an episode that I had on this podcast, uh, the closed mode podcast with Steven. Uh, so you can see here's our intro sentence, which it created based off of the newsletter body below. So you can see it's, oh, let's go back. It's injecting the newsletter intro. That's what's going there that ChatGPT wrote. And then here's our image, which links back to the website and our actual content and it's actually pretty good like this is this is what i would have written if i were to write a newsletter for the content and it's this is this is how it reads ever notice how a single win in a basketball uh in basketball ignites the entire team suddenly everyone's shooting from downtown uh hitting threes like it's nothing that's team confidence and guess what 
it's no different in sales, right? Then he goes into relating uh, on the court to confidence on the sales team. It's a fantastic episode on closed mode. Check it out. Um, but it's a fantastic newsletter too. It goes and it's all formatted because it rendered it in HTML and the newsletter, I actually put it here in HTML so that it renders properly here. At least the box that I have it in is like an HTML box. Maybe I didn't, maybe I, it worked out anyway. <laughs> um, so that it all rendered properly here and then a call to action that's static to go and learn more. And this newsletter is a good start. Of course, I like to have a little bit more variety in my newsletter, but this is a really good start. This is not a bad newsletter coming off a podcast. Um, so I'm really hoping that this is just one baby step I've taken to automating even a more robust newsletter in the future. Hopefully it's giving you some inspiration to take some static content that you're already making. Maybe it's a webinar, maybe it's a YouTube video, whatever it is. If there's a transcript to it, you could be sending out a newsletter from it every single time. That's interesting, visually unique with some static elements, some dynamic elements, some made from AI, some, um, for maybe some other inputs that you're giving it, um, all you have to do is like inject it into a form and then click uh, run the newsletter and then bam, it sends it out. It's just an amazing time to be alive if you're a marketer right now, leveraging these kinds of tools in order to automate what used to take a huge team to do. Uh, it's I'm so excited to be automating my newsletter because I freaking hate writing it. So now to just put it on autopilot, I'm like, ah, oh, finally, thank you, AI. So take a moment to consider if you can automate a newsletter based on the content that you're already making. <music>